Reinforcement learning has been one of the most interesting things I have investigated during my self-study. In this video, we're going to be discussing neuroevolution of augmenting topologies plus key learning algorithm. This is also known as the neat Q algorithm. To fully understand this algorithm, we're going to be examining Q learning first and then talk about how it ties together with NEAT. If reinforcement learning interests you or other areas of machine learning like computer vision or natural language processing, then consider subscribing because these videos are more of a video diary where I investigate some area of machine learning and make videos about them. Before we get into the details of this algorithm, it'd be good to explain the actual dynamics of reinforcement learning, meaning like how does the agent interact with the environment and vice versa, and what information gets transferred between these two things. Given an agent or an algorithm, that algorithm then selects an action. That action gets routed to the environment. Then the environment gives the next state and the reward back to the agent. And so you sort of get this loop of agent takes action, environment gives state and reward back to agent, and then agent gives action, so on and so forth. I think the best example to demonstrate how these two things really tie together is the cliff walking problem. And also it'll really demonstrate how Q learning is used to sort of solve environments that are more simple. Here in the cliff walking example, you can see the elf or leprechaun, either or, trying to get to the other right side corner, bottom right, and that's the goal. Each step the elf takes, the, the agent will receive a reward of negative one. If the agent falls off the cliff, which is the uh, set of black squares at the bottom of the screen, the agent will receive a reward of negative 100. So it really decentivizes falling off the cliff. In order to properly solve this environment, the agent has to explore just enough and exploit just enough. And this is the exploration exploitation dilemma within reinforcement learning. And it turns out that we can use Q values to get our elf from the bottom left to the bottom right. So now when I say Q value, I want you to think that Q stands for quality. And if the agent takes a step that is not a good step, the Q value will not be as good. Whereas if the agent takes a step that is good for it, that gets it closer to the objective, it'll have a better Q value. To simplify it conceptually, just think of Q value as quality value. I think that this specific problem is a great introductory problem for reinforcement learning. So if this is something that you're very interested in, I'd recommend solving that problem first as a way to get your feet wet. But this problem is too simple for our purposes because each step that the elf takes is discrete, whereas for any Atari game, or most of them at least, each step is seemingly continuous. So how do we bridge that gap between discrete to continuous? I think the mountain car problem is an excellent problem for bridging that gap between discrete and continuous, mostly because the state space in this case is continuous, where the action space is still discrete. So what that means is that the car can take the values of don't do anything, accelerate or decelerate. And so you sort of see the car rocking back and forth and the car's goal is to build enough momentum by rocking back and forth to then reach the flag at the top. We can show you in later stages that this works with deep Q learning, where a neural network takes in the state it's currently at and decides, do I need to accelerate, decelerate, or do nothing? The mountain car problem may seem like a completely different problem. However, deep Q learning is still a very good method for solving this problem, despite it having a continuous action space because neural networks are function approximators. And so really what's going on here is that we're trying to find a relationship between the state space and the action that should, that should be taken. And just as in the cliff walking problem, we're given a state and we're trying to figure out which action goes with what. Now, one of the really, really hard problems in doing a reinforcement learning algorithm is tuning the neural network and even deciding on an architecture is incredibly difficult. And so that's why NEAT kind of comes in because NEAT allows you to explore many, many different topologies or network structures to sort of determine like which one is the best structure to, to solve your problem. What we do in practice is make 100 or even 1,000 agents and then have each of those agents have a slightly different network structure, whether it's having more nodes, more layers, etc. Then we allow these agents to run the simulation simultaneously. The best agent is then taken and made to reproduce. Reproduce here means 
make more neural networks from that one. And you can see this in action with the mountain car problem because you see many, many different cars on screen. So these cars sort of go back and forth and the, the best one from this bunch is then moved on to the next generation. And that's in general the neat Q algorithm where as the agent interacts with the environment, it learns via deep Q learning, but it takes the best neural network or the best agent from that generation it uses that one to reproduce the next generation of different neural network structures. And the information is then passed from one generation to the next generation. And you can see that with the uh, centipede problem. In the training for centipede, I had about 100 agents at one time playing the game. And over time, I got very, very good at playing the game. But there's an interesting exploit that happened during training. And that was the agent would go all the way to the right and then fire nonstop. And that's how the agent got the highest score it could get around 30,000. It was interesting how it found this exploitive because it's not very intricate. It just seems very, very simple where it would just go all the way to the right to where it couldn't go right anymore. And then it would spam the fire button. Especially from a human's perspective, that, that just seems like a very boring way to play the game because you want to move le left and right, up and down, or whatever the general strategy may be. But from the agent's perspective, going all the way to the right and just firing was, was enough to reach a high score. Other than that general exploitive of going all the way to the right, there really wasn't any other eventful strategies that came from the neural network training or even the neat Q training, which was rather anticlimactic. And so I think the next video I'm going to move away from reinforcement learning because I want to just explore different realms of machine learning. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.